city search, this is gonna be a pain. So they partnered with Facebook. I can now sign into, into city search using my Facebook account, and therefore I can bring my friends into that environment. I can see if they have written reviews on city search, and then I can immediately, again, look for my foodie friends to see what they have written about a particular restaurant. But what if you, as an advertiser, could say, I want to look into that chain of intent, be able to capture and understand what was the previous search that was done. Oh, I wish absolutely that every major and minor CEO in the country could get view of not only the slides, but hear the, you know, how she expounded on the slides, because they're the decision makers. They're the ones that need to be brought up to speed with how important this whole arena is for their company, for their company's long-term and short-term success. So Charlene was superb. <laughs> she was great. You know, there are sadly still companies that are operating as if they're in a bubble, and it, like Charlene mentioned, that you know they're very reticent to give up control. They think they're in control, but in fact, it's 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 a dream at this point. It's a, it's a ghost dream because everyone, being the fact that they have these opportunities in the public spaces to say what they want about whatever and whoever, uh, companies should be realizing that they are absolutely not in control and they should be encouraging those dialogues. This is really about creating a relationship and leadership and management is about having a relationship with people who are going to follow you mm -hmm. and do the things that you want them to do. It's not about controlling them and making them do something. You can't make anyone do it. They have to want to do it. Right. So how do you do that? Well, you can have trusted relationships, you can have covenants, agreements, structures, processes, but in the end, you don't control it. You can't. You can't control a relationship. So. I think people need to move away from this semblance of this feeling that I'm giving up control and therefore giving up something, it's highly risky. Well, let's mitigate the risk, let's think about the contingencies that you can put in place, and, and really think about what are the benefits of having a stronger, deeper relationship, a true relationship that's authentic mm -hmm. and real. It's not about you giving up control and getting nothing for it, though. So, for example, I work with a client that has a network of 80,000 members, and prior to using social media, there really wasn't an, a, a, an effective outlet for them. So now we've created a Facebook fan page, Twitter, a YouTube channel, and we encourage the conversations to happen online, we encourage the interaction, we give them things to talk about, but at the same time, we're listening to what they're saying and we're responding to what they're saying, and it's really laying the foundation of watching what's happening within our network and then with potential people that want to be part of the network. So it just opens up a, an engagement that was never possible before. The pyramid has five sections to it. The bottom one is people who are watching and engaging with you that way. So they're listening to your uh, podcasts or reading your blogs. They're going on, onto Facebook and reading things there, maybe following you on Twitter. Mm -hmm. But they're not actively doing anything, they're just using it for themselves. One level above that are people who are sharing. They're taking that content and sending it to somebody who they think would be helpful, helped by it. So it could be as simple as copying and pasting that URL into an email, but more frequently it's, it's taking something, forwarding it to somebody on Facebook. Um, it could be at the end of a YouTube video saying, share this with somebody using those tools, or finding an article and saying, hey, I'm gonna send this to somebody, or tweet it, or dig it. Mm -hmm. So one level above that are commenters, people who are writing short comments, a rating or review of a product or service that you may be offering. They may be writing a comment on your post uh, on a blog or even participating in discussion groups. One level above that are producers, people who create content for a very specific audience. So I have a blog and I write to people who are interested in emerging technologies and business. Um, they're not going to be interested in coming to see me talk about my family vacation. So right. it's a very specific audience. Yeah. And then at the top are the smallest part of the triangle, the apex of it are the curators. People who are moderating your forums, maybe editing your wikis, these could be your employees, but they could also be your most passionate fans, the people who are really deeply engaged with you so that you do all that extra work. Now to your point, most companies say, wow, I really want those people who are highly engaged at the very top of the pyramid, because those are the influencers, they're the ones who are you know, really small numbers, but highly lucrative and, and very valuable to me. My feeling is you need to stop, start at the bottom, really developing a strong base of people who are watching your content, uh, really just absorbing it, uh, consuming it, and then taking that first step of sharing it with other people. Because if you don't have that foundation, then it's very hard to build a culture around commenting and producing content for these people if they're not there. Right. So I think most brands try to go for the very top without building that firm foundation. And you've got to start at the bottom, 
have a really strong base of content that you're producing for people that are very, that's very socially oriented, and then making it really easy for people to share that content with each other. It could be a white paper on your site. Do you say, just download it? Do you say, share it with other people? It could just be as simple as that. Small businesses are, it's taking them a little bit of time, but they're definitely rounding the corner seeing that every single person in their organization is in fact a marketer. I, from the person that's the receptionist to the person in the mailroom, um, because of the fact that everyone can be a publisher, because of the fact that everyone is able to voice their opinion in massively public spaces, um, it's really important to get those people on board, to train them properly so that they can be in fact an advocate as well as um, an apostle, so to speak, of spreading the good news about that particular company. If you don't have that, how can you trade it off against doing more advertising on display or search or events, whatever it is? And it seemed to me that uh, it seemed to me that like giving up control and having and having a better metric space weren't mutually exclusive in the in the worldview that you were pushing out there. That uh, by virtue of having like more toolbars, by virtue by virtue of allowing more people to blog, you could in fact own more of the ecosystem. Uh, such that you would be able to get stronger data on what people were doing surrounding your product, right? Right, and, and again, think about it this way. If you don't go out there and engage, how can you measure it? Right. And you can't, you can't do anything to affect it. So by not giving up control, by not engaging, you are not in control. You're not active in it. So control historically hasn't been about making people do things. Control is, when I ask something to get done, did it happen? Mm -hmm. So that's where the data part becomes very important. If you go out there and you expect that certain things are going to happen, if you do certain activities, I push this, something's going to come out of it. If I tweet something, people will go to that site. Did it work? Right. And was that more effective than search? Uh, you made a point earlier that this is expensive and it should be expensive. It doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't. I mean, to set up a Twitter account costs nothing. Yeah. I mean, how much time does it take somebody to actually manage a Twitter account? Hopefully not their entire day. Okay. It shouldn't be. It should be just part of the things that they're doing for their job. If it's not uh, actually helping them get their job done, whatever that job is, well, you should probably stop it. But you won't know what if it's working or not unless you measure it.